Philly live. Looks like it. All right. Yes, we are. Happy Thursday. Uh, welcome to Pro Power Hour. My name is Chris Weldon. I'm one of the community managers here with House Call Pro. Uh, this is one of our weekly Facebook Live uh, videos that we do every single week. Uh, on Wednesdays, you can expect us live and Thursdays now. Uh, on Wednesdays, we do Whiteboard Wednesday. Um, yesterday was actually our Money Mastery edition of that, and James Griner joined me. Uh, we just did a little mid-year check. Um, and now on Thursdays, we have this uh, additional series. This is Pro Power Hour. It's our third week. Um, and you can expect us live at 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, every Thursday, uh, covering a different um, feature or product that we offer here at House Call Pro. You can kind of think of this um, as a like a quick coaching call, quick demo call, if you, you're interested in um, a feature, maybe you're new with us, maybe you just need a refresher um, on something that you haven't used in a while, or maybe maybe it's like service plans. Maybe you've thought, you know, I'm finally ready, I want to offer those. A couple of weeks ago, uh, we did our session on service plans, we went through uh, what the feature does, and then Phil did a whole demo with us. Um, last week, we talked about voice, uh, and then today we're talking about job costing. Um, so just mark your calendars, expect that every week. Uh, I know in the coming weeks, we're going to talk about reporting, uh, and we'll be talking about invoices in July sometime. Uh, so I'm super excited for both of those. Uh, and if you ever have something you want to learn about, if there's a feature that you're like, man, I would love if you guys could cover this, if you guys could do a demo on this, I've been thinking about it, or maybe, you know, you just need some more help. Let us know. We're open to your suggestions. We're open to your thoughts. Um, and feel free to invite your staff, uh, share this with other people. Um, this is just an ever-evolving resource, uh, and we hope to just continue to expand on Pro Power Hour uh, and just, like I said, bring you guys more training resources. Uh, Phil's been with us the last couple of weeks. Uh, we'll have different onboarding specialists join us throughout the series, but super grateful for him and for their entire team's partnership on this. Um, I think that, that covers the intro, so I'll pass it to Phil and we'll get going. Sure. Um, hello, everyone, again. Um, if you haven't been here uh, to one of our sessions before, I'm Phil. I'm one of the uh, onboarding specialists. Um, so if you are on the Max plan or the Max Plus plan, you have probably dealt with me or somebody on my team. And we have pretty much showed you the ropes to get you up and going uh, within the system. So I'm really excited to show you guys about the new job costing feature. Um, it's actually been around for a little bit, but um, we've kind of tailored it and improved, made a lot of improvements to it. So there are quite a couple of moving pieces here. So feel free to shoot out any questions in the chat. Uh, Chris will let me know if anything comes up and I'll be happy to explain anything uh, regarding our job costing. So to go ahead and start with the presentation, um, we're just going to hop right into the slide deck here. So Basically, we're going to talk about what can be tracked, um, talking about setting up your costs, and of course, we'll do talk about those job cost breakdowns and how to track some of those materials, and I'll even show a little demo of how we can do this. So the first part is what costs can be tracked. So uh, before, we really used to have unit price versus unit cost. But now we've gone ahead and expanded for miscellaneous costs. So for that, when I'm onboarding pros, I typically talk to them about this is um, if somebody buys lunch for the team or if you are uh, keeping track of filling up uh, the truck full of gas, things like that. Other things, including permits and equipment rentals, uh, sometimes for some people, if they hire an outside subcontractor, miscellaneous cost is a great place to put that information. Now. Next put next another one we have is commissions. Now I always tell everybody at this point our commissions is very basic. Um, essentially, what we can do is have one employee and we can give them one commission um, one commission rate. Um, so if that's you know for me that's going to say ten percent. Um, so that means on every job I will receive ten percent of uh, that revenue from the job and that will go into your costs. Labor is a new feature and a lot of people have been asking for it for a long time. And it's a really cool feature now that we've um, kind of harnessed it and mastered it a little bit. So we've tied it to our time tracking. So for all of you who are aware of our time tracking on jobs, um, basically what we can do now is we can take an employee and we can say, hey, this employee is either salaried or this employee is hourly. And as they go out on the jobs, that time tracking is gonna start kicking in. And basically, we'll be able to pull that report to see how much they're costing us on jobs. And then lastly on here is material tracking. So uh, with materials, I mean, we've kind of had this before, but now 
as you can see the little breakdown to the next to me the pretty little picture um that is a way another way for us to look at it but again it goes back to the basics of how much does that material cost you and how much are you charging your customer for it so thing I started talking about was the labor rates. And so within the employees and permissions, as you go into each employee, you can set them up at the hourly rate. You can set them up as salaried full-time or salaried part-time. And we have here kind of a little breakdown of the different ways to figure out um, the math behind that set, that full-time and that part-time. Um, and you'll see when I start to demo this a little bit, you'll see this screen and how we can use it. Um, there is the calculator here that talks uh, gets you to figure out what that fully loaded rate is for your employee. And we're going to talk about that in a minute as well. Um, another thing that I talk to uh, when I'm training my accounts on setting up these labor costs is this is really geared more towards people that are going out in the field. Um, if you really wanted to, you could put this information in for your office staff. However, in my time here, I don't really see a benefit of doing so. Really, it's for your technicians because, again, it works as that time tracking starts to kick in. So what is a fully loaded rate? Um, you'll see that within our system. Some people consider that your overhead, um, and that's essentially what it is. It's really if you're going to say, hey, you know, I pay my technician $35 an hour. Well, does that include what they what their take home is? Does that include what you're paying on workers comp, on insurance? Is that what you're um, if you cover any other outside insurances, basically any additional costs. So your fully loaded rate is what you're paying them hourly or salaried, plus all of that overhead for each technician. Um, so how to add that fully loaded rate? It's really just manually on the screen that we were previously looking at. So just kind of filling in the information here. Again, we'll demo this at the end of the uh, slide deck. Um, and as I was talking about the little calculator, when you click on the use our calculator, we're going to ask you four questions and they're down here at the bottom. So we have the net earnings. That's the amount the employee received in the last pay period. So their take home, the employee gross earning. This is uh, the net earnings of the employee with taxes added. So pre-tax um, employer taxes and contributions, the amount paid by the employer to cover taxes and any contributions so, such as 401k and the overall overhead, so the amount paid to cover additional employee costs, health insurance, workers' comp, other benefits that you may offer. So when it comes to labor costs, um, when we do our demo, we're kind of going to run through basically one project one day, but there are what we want to know about when it comes to multi-day. So with multi-day, because now we have our appointments, um, best way that we can do this is is that with um with appointments really as the time tracking starts to kick in one thing to call out is is that the time tracking is going to cover the total amount of hours on the job if you really want that breakdown of each particular uh time tracking per each day the best thing you're going to want to do is to then go into segments but we're going to that's going to be for a whole another session um but in terms of multi-day labor costs the best way to keep track of those costs when it comes to appointments and also if you're going to kind of do it um, in a kind of a progress style is, is that in the mobile app, the start button does become a pause button for your technician. So what I typically advise a lot of my accounts is, is if you're going to do a multi-day job is, is that when your technician is done for the day for, let's say, day one, instead of hitting finish my job, because what that's going to do is tell House Call, Paul, House Call Pro that the entire job has been completed, I tell them to go ahead and hit that pause button. And the reason is, is because there's going to be a couple little prompts that they can click on, and one of them is other and it gives them a chance to leave a note. And that's where I typically advise them to say, uh, finish my work day one. So that that way, when they clock in for the next time, they can leave the next note that says starting work on day two. We'll see a little bit of that a little bit later. Um, but just wanted to call out that uh, pausing the job is great for multi-days. Um, and also when they hit that they are finished their work, that is actually telling House Call that the job is completely completed. 
Um, one other thing is that you can enter the hours. Um, I'll show that in the demo as well. So if for some reason anybody forgets to hit a specific button, we can still go ahead on the back end and make that change or that update. So when it comes to the job costing breakdown report that we give per, uh, per job, is it's going to look very similar to this, and we'll see it a little later. Um, there is a section for uh, all of our pros that do flat rate. Now, kind of the usual report is going to kind of look basically the top two thirds of this report here. It's not going to have that expected costs. Expected costs is really best for uh, businesses that do flat rate. So that that way, if you're going to say, hey, you know, it's going to take me three hours to install this water heater and get everything up and running. Um, and then when we start doing the time tracking, we're going to see above how much time was actually spent. So that that way we can see what our costs should be for that particular service versus how much they actually were. So that's really kind of the breakdown uh, for flat rate when it comes to uh, looking at this report. Some of you have used, um, might be using the Profit Rhino edition. Um, that's a great way to be able to help your expected costs because all of that is coming out of the Profit Rhino price book, which those prices as well as those times on job is really collected by Profit Rhino, Callahan and Roach, where they go ahead and basically take all that data, put it on a national average. And that's where, how the book essentially works and how we track that time and material. Um, it is important, so show expected job costs must be turned on if you want to have that feature. It is not already turned on for you. Um, I will go ahead and show you where to do this in the uh, setup, but it's within your account settings. So for time and materials, that's another uh, big percentage of our customers here. Um, so as you can see, we really just cut out that whole bottom part of the expected costs. And in there, as we start to put in that unit cost versus that unit price, as soon as that time uh, tracking starts kicking in, and there's also the place for the job inputs where we can put our material costs and our extra material costs. So that is where we're going to be able to get that full breakdown of our costs, our revenue, our profit margin, and what we're taking home in profit. So when it comes to material detail tracking, there are quite a bit of moving parts. Um, so one of it is one of them is when we do a job input. That's what I typically tell a lot of my accounts for when they do work orders or they write up invoices, but they don't want the customers to see the materials that were used. So that's why we put in job inputs. That way we can go ahead and put in all of our job inputs, our materials, our uh, miscellaneous costs, and be able to put those in there and basically the customer's not gonna see these, but we have them internally. The other option is as what most people have seen as they've been with us for a long time, is, is that we've always had that breakdown of services and materials. So if you do put it into the material section, technically there is a way that you can uh, manipulate your invoices and estimates to uh, not have your customers see that information, but that's for another time. Um, that's really, this example is for when you want customers to see those materials and you'll be able to keep track of um, basically your source of where you got that material from, the purchase status, as well as which vendor you uh, received it from. So when it comes to it on the mobile app, um, there is for... Uh, and for reasons for tracking these materials is really, again, just so that you can get a complete PL uh, statement at the end of each month or at the end of each week, depending on how often you pull one. It's a great way to track all of your costs and the materials that have been used because we do have a material usage report. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. Um, and then being able to compare uh, really your flat for people who are doing flat rate, you can see that breakdown of your expected costs and what your uh, actual costs are. And um, a common question that we get, especially when it comes to the mobile app is, are technicians able to see these job costing reports? Um, the answer is it's up to you essentially, because it's within the, um, it's within the employee settings that you can allow certain employees to see uh, job costing reports, but 
I'm going to say 99% of the people I do usually turn that off uh, for their technicians. Um, and when it comes to all of the sourcing of the materials and keeping track of those materials, I do tell everybody that House Call at this time is not does not have a inventory section where you can actually kind of look at all of your materials and see which ones you really need to order your next parts on. That might be something coming down the road, but as of right now, what we can offer is, is a report to tell you how many times a particular material has been used over a period of time. Um, really on the next one, we're, uh, the next session we have, we're gonna go into reporting. In that section, we can definitely show you how to build the closest thing to an inventory report that you can within House Call. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the demo before I do. Chris, any questions? I'm just taking a look. I don't see any questions right now, but I see Chris and Jen have been following along with us. Um, guys, it's good to see you. All right. Um, so then I will go ahead and start doing a little demo here. So uh, first thing that comes to it is, is we need to set ourselves up to be able to track our job costing. So First thing we want to do is go on up to our account settings. And there's going to be an option for jobs. And within jobs, there is job costing, commissions, as well as the material de de detail tracking. So first thing you'll want to do is turn on all the ones that apply to you. Obviously, I'm just going to turn them all on so that we can see everything. Commissions. This is where we can go ahead and turn those commissions on. Underneath is the little pencil here, which allows you to set up how each particular employee is commissioned. And material detail tracking. So in here, this we might talk a little bit more on when it comes to reporting, but I just kind of want to show you while we're here. Um, so as when you are putting in materials as line items or as your job inputs, you have the ability to put a source. So our defaults are typically inventory and non-inventory. I went ahead and added POs because I know a lot of people I work with work on purchase orders and also for trucks. So if we want to keep track of what's on people's trucks or what comes off people's trucks, this is a great way to do that. For purchase status, I put in, um, I think we, our default is ordered and need to order, but I also put in received and back ordered. Um, it's a great way to also keep track of our materials on each particular project. And then for vendors, that's pretty straightforward, just kind of putting in which vendors you get most of your parts from so that when we pull our material uh, tracking report, we're able to see, you know, how many materials we've gotten for them from a specific vendor. So um, before we dive into a job, the last thing I wanna show is under employees and permissions. If we come over here to Luke Skywalker and we go up to his pay, this is where that where you can start setting up the labor rates um, so that you can start getting those labor costs. So if we hit the edit button here, I have, uh, let's say, let's change it up a bit. Um, let's give him a raise. So well, Luke's gonna get $50 an hour. Um, for additional costs, this is where you can put in any that you know off the top of your head. Um, if he is straight up $50 an hour, you don't have to put anything else in there. There is the use the calculator, as I mentioned, where it asks you those several questions. Um, I don't have, since he's not a uh, real employee, I'm just going to put zero through them all. Maybe I'll put in 100 here just so that you can see how it'll change. Um, all right, let's try that again. So we put a hundred and maybe two hundred. There we go. So great way if you don't know exactly how much your employee is costing you. I used the calculator there. I punched in all of those numbers. And so now it's telling me that he's actually costing me $450 an hour. Pretty expensive employee, but um that's essentially how we use the calculator. So if I know that that's wrong, I know that he's $50 an hour for me, I'm gonna go ahead and zero that out. So now let's go ahead and start a job. Let's 
calendar. Make sure Luke's on it. Okay. Now we know the typical workflow of when we are doing a work order, working on a job and creating invoices. So I'm going to skip a lot of this top part here, but things to call out is down below um, right here. If you've ever been in this section of the time tracking, the time tracking obviously starts when they hit on my way. So that will start the clock down there for the total travel time. It will stop as soon as they hit the start button and start the clock down here. Um, then in the mobile app, that start button does become the pause button, as I mentioned, so that that way we can get our accurate readings of how long it takes to get to the location and how much time it took to complete the job. As we can see here, my, my little section here is highlighted gray. This is where you can go ahead and make any manual edits or be able to read any of the notes that have been left behind. So if Luke over here is telling me, well, I forgot to hit a couple of buttons, let me go ahead and say, uh, it took me 30 minutes to get there, and it took me four hours to complete the job. Okay, we can certainly do that. All right, so this is how it's going to look as they are hitting start and stop uh, and hitting pause when they leave their notes behind. We'll basically see this history down here. So that's a way you can keep track of what's happening and when it's happening. All right, so now we've got a little bit of labor going here. Let's go ahead and throw on a couple of services. Um, I'm going to go ahead and we'll just say general pest control. So unit price here, we'll say it's been it's a thousand dollars. And now when we go to materials, if we want it to be materials that our customer is going to see, I know a lot of my materials are all over the place. I'm just going to use this thermostat as an example because it's already in my price book. Um, here's where there is sold by and commissions. So if you are tracking that particular information, obviously we'll go more in depth on this on, uh, the next call when it comes to reporting. But, um, if we're going to say, yeah, Luke is going to get commissions for selling this thermostat for the source here, we're going to say it's coming off of his truck and he already has the part. So the part is received and we received it from Home Depot. We'll hit save. So now we have all of that information for us here. So our unit cost and our unit price, that's already within our um, materials. So as we go down lower, there is this commissions report where we're able to see commissions per particular project. So as I pull this one up out of a thousand dollar project, he's receiving 10%. So that's already done for me. Job inputs, this is what I was talking about earlier. So we can add any additional um, materials. So let's maybe add material X here. Um, and it costs me, we'll say five bucks. Again, we'll mark it coming off of Luke's truck. He already has it. And maybe he got it from Ferguson's. Let's, okay. Then uh, miscellaneous costs, just for an example, uh, let's say lunch for the team, we'll call that $100. So now we have a lot of costs that are going into this particular job. So if we now look at our job costing breakdown, we can see the breakdown on this particular job is, you know, $225 of this job is going towards labor, 100 bucks towards our miscellaneous cost for that lunch. Uh, $96 in commission to Luke and $35 worth of materials. Um, I do have flat rate turned on, but this particular service is a flat rate service. So that's why it's kind of already mentioning that's going to be 100%. Um, so that's really in terms of the job costing and seeing it, how it works within each particular job. Um, and that's really pretty much it for the demo. Uh, Chris, any questions? Yeah, we did have one question um, from Chris Godwin. He asked this a little bit earlier on <clears throat> referring to materials. He says a lot of the times he goes uh, to a box store and he, you know, he grabs like a one-off um, item that he needs. Is there a way to enter them in? And if it is, and if it is within a range set behind the scenes, it will automatically mark it up. I'm trying to read that again. 
I think I understand it as you're buying it, you're buying a part, you want to add it, but you want to make sure that it already has the markup. Um, so we don't automatically know what that markup is. Um, so that's, we kind of leave that up to you. That's why you can put in that unit cost. And then um, there is for unit price, you can put in your own. However, if you do go into your price book, you do need to have flat rate uh, services turned on from your apps in order to get access to the uh, labor rates and material markups. So you can go into your materials and say like this thermostat, you can turn the switch on to use the material markups. So kind of the answer is a little yes and no, but in your scenario, the answer is no. But if you did take that, put it into your price book, and I turned the switch on for material markups. Here are my material markups. That way it's already gonna know essentially how much we should mark it up. Sweet. Awesome. Yeah, it looks like that's what exactly what he was asking. Perfect. Cool. Um, I'll give everybody one more second if there's any other questions. Of course, if you are catching this later too, you're seeing the recording, uh, don't worry. Uh, myself or or Lauren will we'll, we'll get you an answer. We'll, we'll link with Phil. We'll make sure to answer all your questions. So definitely want to encourage folks to lean on the recording. Um, and like Phil said, we'll be recovering reporting. I believe that's at the end of the month. It's going to be June 27th. Um, so I think we have one or two more sessions before then. Uh, I'll definitely post what the topics are going to be. Um, Anthony Suo, good to see you here. Um, <clears throat> And then I think that's going to cover it for today. A little bit shorter, but that's all right. Um, I encourage you guys, like I said, if you have any questions, drop them in the chat. Phil, thanks again for being here. Absolutely. We'll all over again next week. Sounds good. Everybody all have right. a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye, guys.